Hello everyone, I hope you're well. This video is looking at the Biological Molecules Unit for AS Biology and in particular focusing on monosaccharides and disaccharides. Essentially, monosaccharides and disaccharides are sugars and they play a central role in cells, providing energy and joining together to form carbohydrate macromolecules such as starch and glycogen. Monosaccharide polymers form the major component of most plants in the form of cellulose. In animals, monosaccharides are important as the primary energy source for cellular metabolism. The three main monosaccharides you need to know are glucose, fructose and galactose. Monosaccharides can be classified by a number of carbon atoms they contain. Some important monosaccharides are hexoses or six carbon atoms, for example glucose. Some are pentoses, five carbon atoms, for example ribose or deoxyribose. Glucose itself is an isomer. Isomers are compounds with the same chemical formula but different arrangement of atoms. The different arrangement means that each isomer has different properties, for example alpha or beta. The diagrams on the bottom of this slide show you the alpha glucose on the left hand side and the beta glucose on the right hand side. For your exam, you need to be able to draw alpha and beta forms of glucose. So this part of the video shows you how to do this. I have a couple of tricks I suggest to help you remember how to actually draw them. First of all, I would draw a hexagon a bit like this. Remember that glucose has six carbons and is a hexo sugar. Next, we draw these vertical lines representing the bonds the carbons at those corners will have. Ensure that the vertical lines are long enough to extend on either side of the corners. The next task is to write CH2OH as a flag, so to speak, at the top left hand corner of the drawing. And you also have to draw where the oxygen is on the top right hand corner of that particular hexo sugar. The other corners represent where all the rest of the carbons are. This is where my little trick comes in. This little code word represents the location of the hydroxyl group or the OH groups on the hexo sugar. The first one, the D, represents the down, the next one is up, the next two Ds represent two downs. So if you look at the final diagram, we have the OH molecules in the down position, and then the next one is in the up position, then you've got the down, and you've got another down. Wherever the free spaces would be at the end of your vertical lines is where we put the hydrogen atoms in. You might want to pause the video at this stage to have a go at drawing this yourself before we move on. Please remember alpha, down, up, down, down. Okay, so the next molecule we need to learn how to draw is the beta glucose. The first few parts are identical to the alpha. You can see the hexo sugar, you can see the vertical lines, and you can now see the CH2OH with the O in the corner. This time the code word is slightly different. The code word this time, this time is down, up, down, up, again representing the position of the OH group. So what we then see is something along these lines. Again, note how the first three OHs are in exactly the same position, but the last OH is up this time. This is the hydroxyl group. Okay. So at this point you might want to pause the video again and learn how to draw the beta glucose in your notes. Please remember the beta glu glucose is down, up, down, up. Now disaccharides are double sugar molecules and are used as energy sources or as building blocks for polysaccharides. The three disaccharides that you need to know are on the list here. The first one being maltose, which is composed of two alpha molecules. Germinating seeds contain maltose because a plant breaks down its starch stores to use it for food. The second is sucrose, which is essentially just table sugar. It is a simple sugar derived from plants such as sugar cane, sugar beet or maple sap. It is composed of an alpha glucose and a beta fructose molecule. And the last is lactose, which is a milk sugar made up of beta glucose and beta galactose. The type of disaccharide formed depends on the monomers involved and whether they're in their alpha or beta form. These disaccharides are always held together by a bond known as the glycosidic bond. This is really important for you guys to remember for your exam. 
Monosaccharide monomers can be joined or linked together by condensation reactions to produce larger molecules such as disaccharides or polysaccharides. As you might know from my previous video on monomers and polymers, the condensation reaction releases one molecule of water and uses a net energy input for the reaction to actually proceed. In this particular diagram, that we know that they're alpha because the OH group on the right is shown in the down position. These two alpha molecules would form a disaccharide when they react together. The second diagram shows where the functional groups react to form a water molecule. You can see the two hydrogens and the oxygen, which form H2O, which is essentially water, leaving behind that remaining oxygen that's not part of that red box. When the two alphas are joined together, they form a glycosidic bond with that remaining oxygen. And this molecule is known as maltose. Obviously, being a condensation reaction, it releases a molecule of water, which is also shown on this particular part of the video. This is just another diagram showing you the same reaction in a slightly different format in case this is easier for you to understand. The yellow boxes show the functional groups on each of those alpha molecules and how we form a water molecule when those functional groups react together. The diagram at the bottom highlights a glycosidic bond. You must must remember the name of the bonds that they form as they often ask you to label or name the types of bonds between monomers. So please make sure that you write this, the name of the bond down. Now, the opposite of the condensation reaction is the hydrolysis reaction. I touched upon this in my video about monomers and polymers also. Hydrolysis effectively breaks compound sugars down to their constituent monosaccharides. When a disaccharide is split, for example, in digestion, a water molecule is used as a source of hydrogen and a hydroxyl group. That's the OH group. This particular reaction is catalyzed by enzymes. Please remember condensation um, happens down to the input of energy, whereas hydrolysis happens down to the input of enzymes. The diagram here shows a hydrolysis reaction and therefore the breaking of that all-important glycosidic bond in this particular maltose molecule. I should note that in this particular section of the video, I haven't labelled up all of the hydrogens and all of the oxygens because I don't want to confuse the diagrams. In an exam, you could draw a diagram um, of maltose like it is on the left, still get the marks, or you could draw with the full OH and hydrogen complement and still get the full marks. So that's something for you guys to kind of note down. So I hope that, that was really helpful for you guys. Um, I'll be uploading some more content on polysaccharides um, next. So we'll be looking at starch, cellulose and glycogen in terms of their structure and their function. And eventually there'll be some guidance on how to answer exam questions too. If you've got any questions in the meantime or any comments, please post them below. Please like and share my posts and videos and please subscribe to my page for more content just like this. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully we'll see each other soon.